So as presidential political campaigns in Nigeria are set to begin in full force, today we turn our focus on the opposition People's Democratic Party and the political and internal wrangling happening there. The party in power for 16 years until 2015 is seeking to wrestle power back from the ruling All Progressives Congress in 2023. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar and ex-Senate President Payo Sainim and Bukola Saraki, among many others, are all said to be interested in the party's presidential nomination. But they are all over the age of 60 and seen as too old by some members of their own party. A pressure group has warned against choosing a man in his 70s as a presidential contender, as it may cause the party the election. There are also questions of zoning of the presidential ticket to the south and accusations of a potential hijacking of that ticket by PDP governors. So a real quagmire of issues for the opposition party continues. Well, for more on these issues, I have in the studio with me a member of the PDP, Kasim Afegwa. Chief Kasim, good to have you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and you've quite been... Uh, Below the radar, all through the new year. Yeah. I mean, unlike you, what's been happening? No, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> taking my time uh, studying the scenarios and uh, looking forward to what will happen because uh, at least we have a new leadership in the party and we're hoping that the 2022 will be a year of repoliticking. And so all, all, all hands must be on deck to ensure that we put our house in order and present a formidable front to confront the behemoth APC. All right, and uh, that race for the party's presidential ticket has started. We've seen a subtle jab between these uh, huge figures who are engaging in uh, some fights, but through uh, a pro proxies, actually. I mean, there's this call by this group called the Action Group in your party now that's um, hitting back at uh, Shigun Shoumi, who's the spokesman of uh, uh, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, who had written the... Uh, PDP Governors Forum saying that the 2023 presidential ticket should not be given to someone who is young and unfit to understand the powers and responsibilities that come with the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, saying that people in their 70s actually have better understanding of the country, more knowledge of the presidential office and its powers. What do you make of that? Well, let me first of all say that Nigerians in their millions will not be railroaded to the same belief that uh, captured their imagination in 2015 when we had the present president, over 70, coming on board. By whatever estimation, when you have crossed 70 or you are going upward to 75, 76, nearing 80, your bones are tired. They are the kind of people we call the, at the departure lounge. God grants good health, no matter how it is. Even in the U.S., with Biden, you can see what's happened to their economy. You know, what we are saying is that, I don't, want, I don't understand when people say, people who have better experience and all that. As far as I'm concerned, the PDP cannot afford to get it wrong this time around. They must present a candidate from the southern part of the country to represent it. I don't want to be bogged down by this call for let's open the floodgate and all of that. Alahaji Atiku Abubakar, who Shoumi is referring to, does not have his umbilical cord tied to PDP presidential tickets. But shouldn't he have the first right of refusal, no, having please, been let a, me, a candidate let, of let, the party? Let me land. When you feature a man in 2019 and he tried his best, he couldn't. You cannot repeat featuring him against the same party. What? If he wants to run for president, he should go to another party. PDP must zone power to the south in 2023 so that there will be balance of sentiments, balance of emotions, balance of political contestation. You see, this, this idea of thinking that, oh, you know, PDP will want to put a, a strategy and feature in, in this, all those demographics, demographics don't add up. We are practical politicians. I know all the voting pattern in all the states of the Federation. And so, whether we like it or not, whoever we choose from the South should represent us. Alahaji Atiku Abubakar by now should bid bye-bye 
bye-bye to partisan politics. I enter into that enviable position of being an elder statesman. So let him nurture, let him nurture some younger ones to take over the reins of power. Some are even suggesting that he should become the BOT chairman of the PDP. It can be BOT, it can be elder statesman, it can be enter into the council of state. Anyone you want to put him, please. It's about time for us to be looking in what this is not the age of Atiku Abubakar. This is not his age. We have mm. gone we have gone past that age. We don't want people who will come into office and they'll spend three months here and they're going to spend six months outside. I don't want all of that. As a Nigerian, I want to see an upwardly mobile young Nigerian who has the intellectual sagacity and know-how to preside over the multiplicity of interests that you know that, that preside that prevail over the country. And you and didn't answer have, my as, question, yes. which is if he shouldn't have the first right of refusal, who, having been the under, candidate under of the party in 2019. Under whose constitution would that be? Where is it written in the constitution that somebody must have a first right of refusal? I'm telling you that the sentiments, the emotions, and all the readings should be, tilt towards the southern part of the country. Don't let anybody deceive you. If you want peace, if you want harmony, you want, you, you want some level of homogeneity in the way a man will do business of politics and power sharing, you need to move rotate this power north and south. Have and you, within have, the southern as is, you cannot choose which of the zones... Uh, have you, you read, have you read uh, uh, Senator Bala Mohamed's uh, report? I mean, the governor of Bauchi State, who uh, in his report opened up and advise that the PDP presidential ticket should be left open for all parts of the country to contest. It is not, it is not going to be in 2023. Why? Let us also have the opportunity of having a candidate from the South. If he wins, fine. If he loses, we know that we have, we have balanced the equation. I, I thought Southerners were more for 20, merit and not zoning. You see, I, I don't, uh, Somna, look at the scenario. Bala Mohammed has written a report that they advise the party the party has a liberty with the, with the internal dynamics of what obtains now to also shift to also also shift from that advice see having had we'll be having eight years of you know uh, president muhammad buhari you cannot be talking about another eight years for the northern and uh, 16 years of broken uh, power run no if you, you look, can have that if, one. if you look at the beginning of the fourth republic a lot of persons would dispute with you that the south has had more uh, runs in the presidency than the not. How? Having started with uh, Obasanjo for yeah. eight years yeah. and then coming to Good Luck Jonathan. And yeah. then look at the uh, two Yara to three Dua. years coming of Yara Dua Yara. coming yeah. to Buhari. Yeah. So if you add it together, the not are you doing, has. Are you doing arithmetic balancing? Yes. The, algor mean, the algorithms do not behave that way. You see, the point is Yara Dua was going to serve eight years. So, President Goodluck Jonathan was a child of circumstance. If you want me to produce another child of circumstance, put that person in the candidature of the Southern presidential candidate, uh, Southern, Southern, Southern person, so that that person will be a child of circumstance. Jonathan, President Jonathan never thought of becoming president. Umar uh, Yaradwa uh, was voted for the first term four years, and he was going to repeat another four years to be eight years. But something happened along the way. He so rest in perfect peace. Now, Jonathan did what he did, and in 2015, because he wanted to continue again, some of us didn't support that. that. We voted for a Buhari, we went for a Buhari. But we didn't know that we were going to bring in a, a Holocaust. I mean, <laughs> you have had a taste yeah. of both parties. Yes. Do you so think the PDP is actually prepared for a Southern presidency, considering how the governors have been meeting and the rhetoric just seems to be that if the APC gives its ticket to the South, then the PDP I should can't. actually give his ticket to the North to be in power because the most important thing is actually to win election. No, to be in power is one. To know how to use power is another. We don't want a scenario where you, there will be 16 years run for a particular zone of the country. With the level of you know, internal wranglings we have in the country, with the level of uh, polarization, with the you know, we, 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 there's no cohesion in national politics. There are no national conversations going on. There's no homogeneity of thoughts. Everybody we are sitting on a delicate you know uh, deli deli delicate situation. We are in a delicate situation. So if you try to now with uh, President Buhari's performance in the north, you now want to give another northerner. Then he runs eight years. He can make it sixteen years. Then how do you balance that equation you gave me earlier? Of talking, of thinking about 
uh, south has this. That means this question will have been skewed. Do you want it to be skewed? No. The point is, in 2019, the PDP thought it wise. They gave the ticket to Elijah Tikupu. He won at the protocol uh, this thing. And if you look at it, almost everybody in that contest were from the north. Give us southerners the, at least that opportunity to also present a candidate without a northern aspirants featuring in this whole arrangement. Please tell Alhaji Atuku Abubakar to leave the stage now. This is not the age of Alhaji Atuku Abubakar. We do respect. I was part and parcel of the 2019 election. I was one of the spokesmen of the Atiku campaign and all of that under the party. Again, when we finished that election, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar bolted away. He went to Dubai. He abandoned yeah. us in the trenches. All the, some of us didn't see him until just barely about six, seven months ago. You see, we cannot continue to be force people who are not ready for leadership. Yeah, but you know, uh, those, who are, those who are saying he should come back are saying that if, for example, a Tinubu gets an APC ticket, that he seems to be the only one who can defeat a Tinubu who, who says, or come close. Who says? Do you think that the likes of Ayim, Saraki, or, see, or, or, uh, some or, or so can some actually man. withstand that is a Tinubu or an Oshibanjo in the APC? See, that is in, in the realm of speculation. As it is now, even sentiments of deny us ticket can take away the votes from the South. That, I'm, that I'm what I must tell you. And if you sustain that particular narrative, you are likely to see some level of protest votes. The southern, the, the honorable thing for the party to do with its new leadership is to sit back, including the 13 governors. They need to sit back, do the arithmetics. I'm from the South South Zone, for example. Uh, South South Zone, for example. We have five governors, in which we have six. Uh, Cross River has left. We don't have five governors. We can use that one to negotiate for power. Anybody who is telling you that the votes are not in the South is telling you lies. Go and look at the demographics. This is what I'm telling you. You see, it is not the number of votes you register or the number of under-age children you bring out to, 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 to vote on election day that matters. The new innovation being put in place by INEC is going to be an eye-opener for anybody. After all, APC featured a candidate in the Mambra election who scored 258,000 in, 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 the, in, the, in the primary. So who from and, the, and, south, and, and, who and from the south do you think is strong enough See, there are to win the PDP every, presidential every ticket? Kasim Afebua is strong enough. It is not the <laughs> individual. No, listen. Interesting. It is not the individual that you should be looking at. You should All be right. looking at the structure of the party. PDP has umbrella every nook and cranny of this country. PDP has structures every nook and corner of this country. If you go to my village, if you say PDP, the, 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 the poor woman who is selling the market will say, power. That's the brand. All, right. All you need to do is to plug somebody, put in that brand, and you know you ignite the process. Anybody uh, who is thinking that the, And no one individual can show that the expired responsibility of election conduct. No one well, individual. Well, not even one government. When we come back from the break, we'll yes. talk about uh, financing the party and then running you know, a presidential campaign, uh, considering how costly it can be. Sometimes you're watching the Arise interview, plenty more still ahead. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Somna Sambo. Now we've been discussing the issues uh, in the People's Democratic Party. The major opposition has been having some challenges as it prepares for the presidential election set for 2023. And there's been this battle within some groups there on the age of the presidential candidate that may emerge from the party. And uh, PDP member Kasim Afegwa is still in the studio with me, as is uh, Danjo Maserki, who is just joining us. He's a public affairs analyst and also a member of the PDP. Thank you so much. And uh, I I'll start with you, Danjuma. Uh, <laughs> there's been this debate by this Action 2023 group who just replied, uh, I think who's uh, spokesman, Shagun Shawumi, saying that uh, I mean, Honorable Rufus uh, Omeri wrote back to him saying that the PDP should be prepared to give its presidential ticket to a younger person who is not in his 70s, saying that the idea of uh, uh, an Atiku coming to get the ticket again is not one that the PDP members foresee. And a lot of persons will want to wonder what sort of experience younger persons below 70 will be bringing to the table mm. according to the political demography of the country and how we use our rhetoric. I, I mean, someone who's in 60 should not be regarded as a younger person or even someone from 55. But the likes of Bukola Saraki, I mean, Utambuol, I've been regarded as younger persons, but the likes of Atiku. Mm. Uh, 
people who are in their forties and uh, uh, late thirties in the PDP, what should they be thinking? I mean, is there room for such person to actually even want to think of ever campaigning for the PDP presidential ticket? Uh, first and foremost, I want to put it uh, very clear and uh, very succinctly that uh, the issue of a uh, presidential candidate is not an issue of demography. It's not an issue of age. It's not an issue of whether you are old or you are young. It's an issue of competence. It's an issue of acceptability. It's an issue of the political structure you have as an aspirant. Okay? I am of a younger generation. But you just know how you want to come and cajole me or hoodwink me into just believing that just because someone is a youth, then I should just vote for him. No. That person must prove his mettle. He must tell me what he can do. And I must be able to check his background. You don't on think the it's all about money? Been, it's not about <laughs> money. It's not about money. It's not all about ethnicity. It's not about religion. It's not about tribe. You know, but it's about that competence. And as, like I said, it's about acceptability and what have you. But I want to say in here that it's not that there are no competent Nigerians that can lead this, young Nigerians that can lead this country. We have a lot of them. Okay, but there are other factors that come into play when it comes to issue of presidential election. And let me tell you, whether one is a president, at, I mean, is, a, is someone at seventy or not, I don't think is a big deal to me. And well, even in the Nigeria, Nigeria of today, young people are actually saying that they don't want. Uh, I mean, the older generation to lead them any longer. Yeah, it's an agitation. And they have the majority in terms of the political demography. No, it's an agitation. It's not all the young people that are saying that. What we are after is, even if you are old, what is, your, uh, what is the condition of your health? Are you sound mentally, physically, and otherwise? If you are sound, fine. If you are young, what is your competence? What is your capacity? What is your capability? Where are you coming from? Uh, and not that gets back to the issue uh, of Atiku. For you. Aren't people saying that because they believe that Atiku has the first right of refusal, having been the candidate of the PDP in 2019, and that he has a war chest to confront an APC that has the possibility of either a Tinubu or Shibanjo emerging. Mm. These are people who are in the ruling party and they have the powers to do a lot considering how Nigeria's polity is. I want to tell you I have no doubt that Atiku would make a fantastic president. I don't have a doubt. At this age? Yes, if you check his track record. Okay. Because Atiku is somebody that is very dynamic. He's somebody that has been following the trend. He's somebody that is in terms of the current and contemporary realities of the world. Okay? And he's a man that if you check his uh, background, in governance, in business, in politics, and what have you, you can rate him very highly, okay? But uh, just like I was saying, it takes a lot to be president. So even if Atiku wants to aspire, we expect Atiku to do more, to be able to woo a lot of uh, the voters, majority of the voters, to his side. Don't, like you, think any other tone, young don't you think it's the turn of the South to pro produce the presidential candidate of the PDP in 2023? I don't think it's even the turn of any geopolitical zone. Because Why? currently, Nigeria is on the brink of collapse. Nigeria is surviving on the oxygen fueled by the individual ingenuity of Nigerians. So we need a president from wherever he's coming that will take Nigeria into a surgical theater and perform a very emergency and speedy operation on it so that Nigeria will bounce back on its footing. Uh, if not, uh, we'll be heading to a, a, a brick wall and Nigeria will collapse. I well, want to assure uh, you. Kasim Afekba, you have heard it. The fear actually is that uh, from what he has said, if the PDP does give this ticket to someone from any geopolitical zone, just because it's their turn, the PDP may not be in power. Aren't you considering that yourself? You see, let me tell you, there has to be balance of emotions, balance of sentiments in a country as multi-plural, you know, heterogeneous as Nigeria. If you don't get your politics right, you will not get your governance structure right. This is what people are missing. You see, we have a ruling party with a president who is not playing politics as it should be played. Politics is suffering. That's why you see APC is dithering and withering in different directions with factions here and there. They voted for 36 state chairman. They got 92 or thereabout. <laughs> and so, if you don't get your politics right, the issue of governance will suffer. What you need to do is for you to, first of all, operate on the basis of balance, justice, equity, fairness. You see, when those who are authors and um, you know, uh, operators of the political system will tell you that reforms in any system is not just about giving reforms. They will ask you a further question. 
How equitable is that reform? Are you, be, are you taking care of A and B? I, is your algorithm, are you getting it right? And all of that. So for me, if you don't give us that sentiment that we are due in the South to have a candidate of the PDP, and you are telling me you want to open it and then you run a system uh, for 16 years in the North, I can tell you, the uprising that will start in this, in this country, you will not be able to bear it. You see, you are still having banditry and all that in some sections of the North. If this thing creeps to the South, it will be worse off. I now, now how, I, I, if talking from a general perspective and the, yes. the spirit of nationhood, how do you think the leaders of thought in the country can come together to appeal to the major political parties to play back the 1999 playbook, or let's say 1998 playbook, where the biggest political parties, the three big parties then produced candidates from the South? That's the question that should agitate the minds of those who are, thinking, who are still thinking about the age of Atiku at this time. For me, after the 2019 elections, if I were in the shoes of al Haji Atiku Abubakar, the Wazir of Adamawa, I will issue a formal statement announcing my retirement from partisan politics eh? and seeking entry into the top echelon of elder statesmanship. That would have been the beauty. Let me tell you, I am not, I don't, uh, I don't bootleg, I don't do eye service. When IBB tried to contest in 2009, 2010. Very and, quickly. Yes, and, 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 and uh, you know, the Northern Consensus Forum chose Atiku and all of that. When he clocked 70, I did a speech for him. Quit politics, partisan politics. Don't get yourself involved. Just go and be another statesman. That's why APC is contest you go to IBB. PDP is contest you go to IBB. Article 77 in 2023 cannot be standing on the ballot and say that you want to contest. Well, want to if, if Buari could uh, do that, why can't Buari Buari was 72. do that? You know, it was 72 in 2015. Buari 79, you know, 72, 73. And he, Buari gave it to him. He admitted on national television that even with his age, he won't be able to perform. But, and yeah. just three weeks ago, he told us that we are 79. See, working six to eight hours is no joke. <laughs> I, so I'm please, afraid. we are tired we, of we all have these to ancestral, go on break. ancestral candidates. <laughs> Very interesting indeed. Well, we have to go on this short break. When we come back again, we'll continue with the conversation. You're still watching the Arise interview. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world. I'm featuring the voices at the heart of the conversations. I'm Somna Sambo. And I've got... Uh, Kasim Afegboa and Danjuma Serki still here in the studio with me as we discuss these issues of the PDP and uh, the likelihood of someone taking the presidential ticket who is either young or old. And I'll come to you, you know, uh, uh, well, we actually had one of the <laughs> presidential aspirants of uh, IPP to, uh, YPP today and he was referring to some of these persons in their 70s seeking the presidency in 2023 as uh, Jurassic Park politicians and all of that. He has just called them ancestral politicians and all of that. And we've seen people like Tinobu in the APC also being hit hard and all of that. In all fairness, from what you have said, shouldn't the youth who actually have a higher demography be, be, be given an opportunity to actually, you know, take a shot at the presidency and these older politicians step back based on what uh, the popular opinion seems to be? Uh, I want to say it's very uh, important that you should be given a chance. But one thing I want to say that uh, power is not handed over or given on a platter of gold. You must work for it. You must fight for it. You must strategize very calculatively in order to be able to, to grab it. And that's why a lot of us are into politics. And a lot of us are interested in what happens daily in Nigeria, in our polity, in our nation, and what have you. And even in our local communities and areas, we try to get involved to understand. And we try to show leadership. We try to show capacity. We try to show that, yes, we are ready to take over the mantle of leadership. So I equally want to use this opportunity to call on other youths. It's not enough for you to sit down at the comfort of your uh, f uh, home, you know, maybe uh, use the, your social phone, media the social media, or issue a press statement, and what have you. You have to walk the talk. 
you have to act. You have to get involved. You have to participate. And belong to the party. And belong to a political party. And within the political party, you have to understand the dynamics in that political party. You have to understand the structure in that political party. Okay, now, and you have you to understand people trust your political party, the PDP, to be able to, to deliver in 2023? Do you believe that the IU, uh, your IU yes. uh, leadership of the National Working Committee of the PDP is prepared to hand over a presidential candidate that will take the PDP into victory in 2023? I don't think there's a better time that you should trust the PDP more than now. The PDP is the only major political party today that has a real youth as its youth leader, a youth of 25 years. That is, is a harbinger of hope to a lot of youth. He is someone that has come to give real confidence in the youth, to show them that, yes, the PDP is ready to hand over to one, to allow youth to get uh, to participate in politics, to mentor them, and to ensure that there's a generational shift in leadership position. And you can see, if uh, the way the youth now are singing choruses of PDP in droves, and equally in these various states, we are advocating and agitating that more youth should be given uh, opportunity. And uh, if, uh, your chair, are you led uh, PDP, I think that executive can uh, wouldn't have come in a better time like than this but, but because of what accusing you know what? of being a, a puppet of the PDP governors, and that's why you see there's almost tension anytime the PDP governors are holding meetings uh, because it's almost like they are the ones deciding where the party should go to. No, anybody who consider Yoche Ayu as a puppet of the PDP is not being fair to him. One, Yoche Ayu is a founding member of the PDP. He's one of the G34 that formed the PDP. And he has remained in the PDP he, uh, till date. He has always been very consistent. And everybody knows that he's an honorable man. He's not a man that can easily be told. If you check through his history, when he was a Senate president, when he was minister, and what have you, his track record speaks volume of him. So it's not one that you can easily think because you br brought him to power, then you can trade with him. Okay, now, I, let me just I, I, tell you this oh, all right. before you, you move ahead. If the governors think that he, they are the ones that brought him, then he is one of the people that founded the party that even gave the governors the opportunity to become governors today. When they did that, some of them were not even able to contest for any election. Then who would uh, now, claim uh, more uh, ownership I come to you. Do you think uh, Yoche Ayu has the capacity to deliver PDP to victory in 2023, considering how the PDP governors have just been the one, you know, uh, uh, tilting the power balance in the party? Anytime they are well, holding meetings, <laughs> you don't hear of the party, party's national chairman, the... Everything just seems to be what the governors are thinking no, or saying. Uh, no, it's not. It's not true. There are there are different cadres of meetings. If it is the governors' forum meeting that are, uh, the, of the PDP that are meeting, of course, uh, uh, right honourable Samuel will preside. If it is the party national working committee and the neck of the party, which I will naturally preside. But the greater responsibilities will be the ability of. Dr. Iyocha Ayu, former Senate President, member of the G34, being able to stand firm and shift and stand firm on the path of justice, equity, and fairness, and uh, by allowing a southern candidate to emerge. If you don't do that in PDP, there will be an implosion. And I can, I can give you that for free. And when I say this, I say this with all due sense of responsibility because I have access to a lot of persons in this country. I have access to a lot of factors, you know, that at least, you know, processes, you know, uh, what do you call political process, pol uh, political power. So what I'm saying in essence is this. Get the emotions and the justice right. By the time you give us a southern candidate, if we struggled with all our powers, with our collaborators and, and friends from the north and everything, we get it, fine. If we don't get it, we know that in 2027, we are not going to ask a candidate of the PDP from the south. If you give a northerner now, in 2023, are you saying if Atiku doesn't become the candidate in 2023, then if or he becomes the candidate and he loses, in 2027 we should be preparing for another Atiku? Is it going to be a perpetual, a perpetual candidacy? <laughs> no. <laughs> see, I think we have moved past the age of article. Please. Okay. You see, I said all this with all due sense of responsibility. He's my good friend. I worked as spokesman. I marketed him in 2019 elections. We, at the risk of our own life, once we finish election, Atiku bolted away. He bolted away to Dubai. Now, and we, no, when, when I query, when I queried some of his core adherents, they told me he's gone to seek medical help. 
is going to rest because of the rigor, rigors of campaign. We don't want that kind of scenario. Now, if, if something if, had if, happened to us, listen, if something had happened to us, who are we going to call? At a time we needed to draw strength from a candidate, it was nowhere to be seen. So for me as an individual and the political emanations that I represent, as a young Nigerian who has capacity to work 72 hours non-stop, I do it all the time in my office. Now, now a lot of I want, who I want, wonder, I want, yes. uh, Kasim, why many of the Southern uh, uh, aspirants are not coming out so strongly? We've only had uh, Dele Momodu <laughs> and uh, uh, Sam Ohabunwa, <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> Uh, uh, with others that are coming, yeah. I'm in I'm in. You, now, you. a lot of persons will tell you that if you put them side by side, but in other aspirants like Atiku, like Amino Tambua, like uh, uh, Governor of uh, uh, Bauchi State, that uh, this the northern candidate uh, aspirants still seem to be strong politically when I you don't talk know, about I Nigerian don't politics I don't, you than are, them. You amuse me, Samna. I don't know how you draw how you draw your conclusions or even your deductions. But this me, is the reality. Me, Kasim Afekboa here, if I come out today, eh, I say I want to contest presidency, you going to the South, you'll be shocked the kind of followership I will get using the PDP structure. So why haven't you no, come out? No, listen, listen. Everybody has his aspiration. I want to run other elections, Lexa election. I want to run. The point is, in February, there will be a clearer timetable for people to come out. And don't think that because they are not making noise in the public that jobs are not going on or meetings are, are not Are they waiting held. for zoning? No, not zoning. Formally Me by the are not, I don't see. Meetings are going on. Consultations are going on by a lot of persons. A lot of persons. They are flying around. They are going around. Oh, you have seen people, some governors fly around, go here, doing that, all of that. See, in February next month, you are going to see a plethora of Area of presidential aspirants. Well, I, I, I hope they the, won't be coming late because the APC is already yes. kicking out. No, there's there. nothing late. Lots, of, see, uh, no. lots of aspirants, very what strong you, ones, are already coming out see, see, from the south, the see, same south you see, are agitating. The only person who is strong from the south is Tinubu. I have not seen any other person. If you have. And you don't think an Oshibanjo. I have not had. I have not had. He will become a strong person. No, he has not. He's in the realm of speculation. He has not told anybody he's running. Tinubu has come out clearly to say he's running. Fine. I don't give a damn about what happens in APC. Now, I want to ask you, would you do an anti-party if, for example, the PDP presents a northern candidate while the APC presents a southern candidate? Will it, you move? No, listen to me. Listen to me. I will tell you categorically, I don't pretend about issues and scenarios. If the PDP presents a northern candidate, I will publicly declare support for his a, an APC that is producing a southern candidate. Publicly. I don't do my things. Because you think it's an me. act of injustice? It will be an act of injustice and an act that is deliberate to enslave us. Well, and we will uh, not, uh, you, we will you, not you give You have heard views. What are the chances of uh, the PDP presidential ticket actually going to the south just like you hear him agitating? Mm, just like uh, you said uh, uh, yourself that even as, a t as, it is, as it is now, there are very few uh, southern candidates that are actually uh, warming aspirants. up for it, uh, aspirants rather, that are warming up for it. And again, a lot of them are just waiting to, for power to be handed over to them, no. which I believe is not no, so. No, 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 we, no. Yes, and just like that I said, uh, no. power and uh, election is yeah. about acceptability. It's about your uh, having your structure to deliver even given the ticket. I mean, it have about you. Tinubu is not yet the candidate of the APC, but you can see him going around the country. Going around the country. And com we haven't seen much going, of the PDP going aspirants the country, doing that. He is just coming out for the first time. That the, okay. the, 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 the APC is working faster uh, than the PDP, no, which is in the opposition. Already APC is the monumental failure in Nigeria. So there's no amount of the... Uh, the, 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 the I mean, some of the from party members were writing even on Twitter change, uh, that in uh, 2014, by this time, Nigeria. you could see the mood of the nation mm. that... The opposition was going to come into power, mm -hmm. but it looks like as we are in 2022, right now heading to 2023, the mood of the nation doesn't seem to be prepared for a PDP. What do you say to that? No, if you are saying that uh, the mood of the nation is not prepared because to PDP, then maybe moving. you are not... Uh, because politically, a lot, of, a lot of Nigerians are not hearing so much from the PDP. No, what is happening that in the is PDP? why we are talking, discussing PDP today. If we are not hearing, people are not hearing PDP, we will not be discussing PDP. I'm discussing the major contenders as far as 2023 election is concerned are in the PDP. 
The APC, just like you said now, you have only one person who so far have come out openly and declared that even people are looking at him with some sense of uh, seriousness. But all the rest are in the PDP. And Nigerians are yearning for PDP because already, just like I said, the APC has taken Nigeria into an emergency whereby it's at the brink of collapse. So we actually need uh, somebody and the PDP to come and rescue all the nations. But just like I said, Okay? I don't want us to be label ourselves and keep trying to whip sentiment. Politics is not about sentiment. Politics is. is about calculation. No, it's it's about your strength. <laughs> it's and sentiment. What have no, you can exactly. work yourself? So now, let's when you begin to bless look at PDP, PDP, let's look at PDP yeah. solving its internal crisis, presenting a, an acceptable party to Nigerians, uh, 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 that it will make it look like a beautiful bride that would be easily acceptable in 2023. Yes. Do you think that PDP is already working and taking those steps? Very quickly as we try to round up this yes. conversation. Be before I answer that question, let me quickly respond to the one he said about there are few aspirants in the South. How many aspirants do you require to become a candidate of a party? Only one. When he emerges, you take, he takes his vice. His so vice. who do you think is no, that no, 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 I'm figure I'm in coming, the South? I'm coming, I'm coming. Once, do you know whether the Southern states, members of PDP, whether they want to conclude and resolve on one person? Are they going to be shouting on the street to do that? So they're meetings, working on the consensus Meetings option. are going on. Okay. Meetings very, are going on. Very quickly. And the PDP is a good brand today that can offer hope and sense of direction to a lot of Nigerians who have become hopeless in the situation where they can't even market hope. Okay, very quickly. So, and I will come to you. What, what makes you think that PDP is still that very strong, viable brand to challenge an APC that's in power in 2023 in 30 seconds? Because PDP remains the better alternative. Nigerians have seen, they've seen the style of governance of PDP in the 16 years it held sway, and they have seen the style of governance of APC in the eight years it is um, it's going to be in power. And so far in the six years, it has been nothing but uh, an epitome of corruption that is took to fight, inability to fight insecurity, uh, Poor uh, standard, educational standards have collapsed. Right. Poverty is ravaging Nigerians. Yeah. Unemployment is increasing well. the, by the day in millions. And what have you? They have actually well, we must dipped Nigeria we must into thank the you. We must thank you so, so much, Danjo Masariki, a member of the People's Democratic Party and the Social uh, Affairs Commentator, and uh, alongside Chief uh, Kasim Mafegwa. Please continue <laughs> to help us draw it <laughs> loud and clear. He's a former yeah, commissioner in those states and a former spokesman. Of, and uh, the president will always campaign. have his way, but the majority well, will have the. Well, we must, no we must, we must thank you. We must thank, thank you, no, gentlemen. No, 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 there is no majority. You, you have, you have, you, you, you have a lot of work. You have a lot of work ahead for you as you plan to uh, uh, hit the road to challenge the APC in 2023.